Hello and welcome to another video tutorial on YouTube channel of Tutorialspedia.com. This video tutorial is part of a series of video tutorials covering different topics and different features of Mule 4 ESB. In this tutorial, we will see how we can use debug perspective and how we can uh, use the features available in MuleSoft AnyPoint Studio to debug any of our Mule applications. Here is the detail of the topics that uh, we will be focusing on in this video. We will first create a simple Mule application in AnyPoint Studio. And once we have a basic uh, skeleton of MuleSoft application created, we will see that how we can make the debug configuration and run our Mule application in debug mode. And once we have uh, application running in debug mode, we will see that how uh, we can use the power of uh, MuleSoft AnyPoint Studio and add the breakpoints. And we can see different uh, on different event processors and we can see how data is flowing uh, in the mule events and how uh, different values are getting changed in the attributes in the variables in the payload and we will see that uh, how we can uh, analyze this data and for any cases uh, in the real scenarios whenever we have to look for any issues or whenever we have to um, go at a deeper level uh, as debugging for our applications how we can achieve all this for this purpose was what we will do is that we will uh, use uh, a, a main flow and we will have another subflow and we will call the subflow from the main flow and we will make some changes uh, using the pay set payload and set variable uh, event processors and we will see that how values got changed and how we can uh, clearly see and analyze all this data uh, using the debug perspective before I proceed with the actual demo uh, in the AnyPoint Studio, uh, let me request you to please uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed before. And also, uh, don't forget to press the bell icon so that you are notified for any new videos uh, which are uploaded to the channel. So without further ado, let's directly jump into the demonstration uh, in AnyPoint Studio. I have already opened AnyPoint Studio and I'm going to create a new project. For this purpose, I will click on File. I will choose New and I'll click on Mule Project. Here we need, need to give a name to the project. Let's give it a name as Debug, Debug Demo Tutorials PDF and just click on the Finish button. So once you click on the Finish button, your project will get created and then you will be able to proceed. Since I want to keep things simple in this project, so I'm not going to make any fancy uh, flows uh, with a lot of uh, event processors. Rather, I'll keep things as simple as possible and focus on the debug things, which is the main focus of this uh, tutorial. Let's uh, create the main flow where we will add the uh, HTTP listener because what we want is that we want to get this uh, process or uh, this message flow started based on an event which, it, which comes through on a specific port uh, using this listener uh, event, uh, event source. Let's now make the basic configurations for this uh, listener. In the basic configuration, I'll click on this plus button and then I will have to specify the host and port. By default, uh, when you click on this uh, configuration for the listener, the port is specified as 8081. So if it, this is available, you can utilize it. Otherwise, you can choose a different port. So for me, I will choose 8084 and I'll just click on OK button. You can also click on this test connection to verify if uh, the connection on this host and port uh, is uh, valid and uh, the port is available. But in my case, since I already know this port is available, so I will just click on OK without testing. So here in the path, let's give it a name as debug demo. And this will, will be the base path. You can add a slash as well in the beginning, but even if you don't add a slash, it will work. And in the advanced tab i'm going to specify only get as the allowed method for this listener okay now once we have this listener configured the next step i want to do is to uh, add a set payload and here in the set payload we will uh, we will uh, specify what exactly payload we want to set by default it takes the entire payload but we are going to change it to attributes dot query parameters dot I will pass a query parameter as a name so I will pick the value of this name query parameter and set it as a payload just for the sake of this example and then 
I will uh, add another uh, event processor after this, which will be uh, which will be used to set the variable. So I will use this set variable, and I will drag it to the flow after this set payload, and I will set the value. Uh, let's name it as ID bar, and in the value I am going to specify attributes dot query parameters dot id so basically i have specified two parameters one is id which i'm going to use here in the variable and there is another parameter with the name name which i will be using in the payload okay so this id whatever the value in the query parameter id will be passed by the user that one will be uh, will be set in this variable after setting this payload setting this variable next i want to call a subflow so in order to call a subflow let me first create a subflow so let me create a flow and here in the core we have subflow so i will just drag and drop this subflow and now in this subflow let's uh, keep the name as is without changing anything and in the subflow i am going to add another event processor which is going to be the set payload processor and this set payload just for the sake of uh, debugging what i want to do is that whatever uh, we are passing from the uh, main flow to this subflow i'm going to make some changes so that we can see in the debug perspective later when we are going to debug this that how values get changed when we call a subflow and how it comes back to the main flow once the flow uh, subflow invocation is completed so here i'm going to change this value and what i'm going to do is that i'm going to hard code it so i'll switch to literal mode and i will just write payload from subflow so you can see that in the main flow i'm actually passing the name parameter which we received uh, as a query uh, parameter but in the subflow I'm manipulating and I'm changing it to some hard coded value. This is not a practical scenario, but since our focus is just to uh, see how debug works, so we can do anything as we desire. The next thing that I want to do is that I want to add the set variable. And again, the variable that we have set in the main flow, that one also I'm going to modify in this uh, subflow. So we will keep the same name as ID var. And again, here, instead of uh, Utilizing the same value that we received, I'm going to uh, make a hard coded value as 100. So now what we do is that we have a main flow, and from the main flow, we will have to call this subflow where we are manipulating, we are changing the values. So let's now uh, use the flow reference and add this, drag this flow reference after set variable. And now in this flow reference, we will have to choose which flow we want to call. So we want to call the subflow and we want to pass the payload. Okay, so now what we have done is that we have uh, done the needful to call the subflow from the main flow. And after that, I will simply add a logger at the end. This logger, uh, we are going to keep it as is without uh, making any changes so that it logs the entire payload. Okay. So this is a very basic uh, and a simple type of uh, uh, application where we have a main flow and a subflow. And we are not doing anything fancy here. We are keeping it as simple as possible. Now, once we have created all this, the next thing that we need to do is to run it in debug mode. So in order to run it in debug mode, we will have to uh, select debug configuration. So you, you click on run and debug configuration and you select the project. So we want to do this deb debug demo. No, let me take the correct name. The name is debug demo tutorials pedia. So I will choose debug demo tutorials pedia. Okay. And here in the mule debug, we need to choose the debugger port. By default, it is uh, 6666. So if this port is available, it's fine. You don't need to change it. But if in case in your uh, in your in your server or in your uh, computer, 
this port is already taken by some other application then you will have to change the port here so this will be the port uh, which will be used for the communication of your anypoint studio uh, while running in the debug mode so the internal communication will take place for the debugging purpose on this port okay for our case we already uh, know that this port is available so we will just click on the debug so right now whatever you are seeing was in the uh, design perspective so once you will uh, see that the application runs in the debug mode the perspective which you can see here as well on the top right we have mule debug and we have mule design so it will change to mule debug perspective so we'll wait for the application to start uh, running and uh, con converting it into the debug mode you can see now it has been converted into the debug mode so what i want to do is that i want to add some breakpoints so on the set payload i want to uh, toggle the breakpoint and also uh, do, okay i will not put another breakpoint because we will continue uh, from this breakpoint so once we have done this the next step is that we call the flow from any of the client for my case i will use uh, uh, postman so you can use any of the client since this is a get request you can even use a browser and you can directly call from the browser as well okay so in the postman i will type the actual uh, url http localhost colon 8084 which i am using slash debug demo let me confirm the base url so the base url is debug demo yes and then we will pass the parameters question mark name is equal to ajmal i will pass my name m percent id is equal to one two three four okay now if we try to uh, call the service by clicking on the send button okay so now when we call the service you can see that uh, the application is stopped at this breakpoint now comes the real uh, beauty of mulesoft uh, anypoint studio that how we can completely see the real picture of the mule events that are passing through the application in the message flow and how values are getting populated so right now when we are at the set payload you can see that uh, we don't have any payload value Ex okay so here the value is set to ajmal yeah why it's set to ajmal because uh, we set the we we did the configuration at the set payload level that whatever value comes into the uh, name parameter that value will be assigned to the payload and then in the attributes we can see all the attributes like you can see here that we have uh, different attributes uh, which we can later uh, use the data weave uh, operators and using the database functions and we can traverse through these uh, uh, attributes and payload and then we can fetch and extract the information as we require you can see here that it's providing us all the necessary information at the header level as well and also at the listener path what is the address uh, which method has been used which query parameters have been passed you can see we have two query parameters so we can see all this information very clearly if there were any uh, uh, request uri request for what's the request path and just in case if there was any uri um, parameters we could have also seen those and additionally on top of this if you see here right now we did not set the variable so var size is zero and at the payload we can see that this media type is also shown here okay so now if we uh, click on f6 or if we choose this option uh, next processor you will see that now the payload actually has been populated previously it was just showing uh, as uh, on, in the beginning what we received but here now you can see that payload value is ajmal which is the value that has been passed as a parameter and right now if you see still uh, variable size is zero because there is no variable you can see the attributes as well and same attributes as we have in the previous case again if we click press f6 to, to move to the next level we can still see that the payload is same because payload now will be changed once we will call the subflow so let's press the f6 again and now the flow has been uh, called the subflow has been called 
but in the subflow the change will happen once we have uh, we have set the value so right now we are at the set payload so now once i will press f6 and it will move to the next level you will see that the payload is changed so you can see here the payload has changed to uh, the value which we set in the subflow which was payload from the subflow and here you can see that in the variables id variable is 1 2 3 4 because it was set in the main flow and the value is same as what we passed in the id parameter in the query string but here in the subflow id variable is going to be changed to another value hard coded value that we set so if i click f6 and now if I see the ID, you can see ID variable is 100. And this is the value that has been set in the subflow. And similarly, payload value has changed based on the information that we uh, mapped in the subflow. So using this, we can see that how uh, our parameters, which we first uh, uh, mapped to this variable and payload, and the, once we call the subflow and we change the value, how the values got changed. And everything that is passing through our flows uh, through the event processor in the message flow and uh, in uh, in different uh, event processors we are whatever actions we are taking based on that if there are any changes happening to attributes to the payload to the variables everything is crystal clear for us using the debug perspective and we can see the exact picture and if we have any issues if we want to debug to analyze certain things and we want to see exactly where some specific change is happening and where we have to take some actions to correct it those things we can identify based on the debugging that we are doing so it becomes very handy in the real scenarios and we can um, benefit from this uh, debug feature and debug perspective in the anypunch studio and we can take the necessary corrective actions based on the information that gets uh, populated into these uh, attributes and payload and the variables in our uh, message flow so if I continue clicking F6, now you can see it has gone out and we should have received a response. And you can see that we have received a response on the client because the timeout value was set to unlimited in the postman by default. So it keeps on waiting for the response. So in this case, we see that we have received the response, which is payload from the subflow. So that's how we uh, use the powers of AnyPunch Studio and how we use the debug perspective. I did not go into the nitty gritties and uh, more details because uh, I wanted to keep this project that I implemented for this uh, demo as simple as possible and just focus on the high levels of uh, debugging. And uh, I hope that the information that I conveyed uh, through this tutorial will be helpful for you. If you want further readings, uh, you can go through my website tutorialspedia.com where I have uh, a lot of uh, information for you, uh, not only on MuleSoft, but on the other uh, related integration technologies as well and uh, different step-by-step -step tutorials as well. And of course, if you are focused on the MuleSoft tutorials, uh, I have a playlist uh, on YouTube channel of tutorialspedia.com where different uh, topics have been covered uh, in detailed step-by-step uh, -step tutorial. And you can go through those uh, tutorials and uh, you can uh, understand how we uh, utilize the power of MuleSoft. And uh, last but not least, official documentation of MuleSoft. That's the best resource for anyone to understand and to go through the technicalities and the nitty gritties uh, of uh, MuleSoft ESP. And I hope that uh, whatever has been conveyed through this uh, video and in the playlist will be helpful for you. If you have any questions or if you have any confusions, feel free to write in the comments section. I'll try my best to respond to your queries and your questions as soon as possible. Thank you very much.